Firewalls, what they are and how they work. I'd like to talk about firewalls, so the next time you watch an action movie or CSI or something, and they talk about, you know, I'm going to hack the firewall to increase the throughput of the TCP IP database or some other nonsense, that you're going to be able to look at it and go, wait, that, that didn't make sense. That's what I do in almost every movie and TV show I watch. Firewalls. It's software that uses a set of rules to filter network traffic. It's used to block known bad content. Basically what this means is whenever information is coming into a computer, if there's a firewall in place, the firewall looks at it and using a set of rules determines whether or not the information is malicious or whether it should be there or not. And it uses a set of rules to discard certain packets. What's a packet, you might ask? Well, I'm glad you did, because now we're going to talk about those. A packet in this context is a formatted unit of data carried by a packet-switched network. Well, that doesn't really give you a whole lot more information. Um, basically, most information that's transferred through from one computer to the next is done on a packet-switched network. Essentially, there's a packet-switched and a circuit-switched. Circuit switch is a physical thing. It's this is it goes to a location and based on particular information a physical circuit will route information. A packet switched network it basically uses the content of the packet to determine where the information should go. But we'll get into that more in depth right now. So it's divided into two parts. There's control data and payload data. Control data is information about how to handle the payload. It's also contain, it also contains information about the payload. How many more packets are coming, where it's going, where it came from. Basically what this means is a packet shows up, the firewall or whatever looks at it, uh, it can be the firewall or whatever application was requesting the information, looks at the packet and the packet will say, you know, I came from this computer, I'm going to that computer, and what I contain is an mp3 file, and this is packet, you know, 7 of 5000. The payload is whatever you're accessing. So an email, an mp3 file, a data from a video game, it's whatever information that packet is transferring. So the packet has three parts, a header, payload, and a trailer. So we're going to look at the header right now. So it's information about the sender, recipient, and how to handle the payload. So it'll have the starting address, the destination address, and what to do with that payload. Like if it's part of a, an existing packet, if it's part of a new transfer. This is generally what's called metadata. That's data about data. This is important. This is something that you should kind of try and commit to memory because metadata comes up a lot in computing. It comes up in databases. It comes up everywhere. It's basically data about data. And it also exists outside of computers. You can think of a library has a lot of metadata. That's information about books. So it's basically you go to a library website and find out, oh, this book is located on this shelf. That's metadata about the book. And that's what's contained in the header. It's information about where this data came from. It's also called control data. And it should follow clear and unambiguous specification or format. So basically what that means is that each packet should follow a strict guideline so software that's using it knows how to handle that. So next we have the payload. So it's the header, the payload, and the trailer. This is the fundamental purpose of the data packet. If you're sending the string hello world to somebody, that would be contained within the payload. And it's usually a piece of the data because typically on the modern internet, our information that we're sending back and forth is far too large to be contained in a single packet. Then you have the trailer. This is usually supplemental data. It's always at the end of the packet. Uh, it's usually additional handling information. Uh, it's usually stuff like, um, you know, this is packet 15 of 1,000, I expect more, or it's going to say this was the last packet in the stream, um, that kind of information. And this, this information goes back and forth. So as you're accessing information, say, from Amazon.com, packets are going back and forth. So Amazon is sending something to your computer that says, here's this information, and then your computer sends back, okay, I got it, send me the next one. And that information kind of comes from the trailer. So basically, uh, if it says, all right, this is the end of the packet, this, uh, and it knows it was packet 15 of 1,000, it sends back to the server, hey, 
I got packet 15 and it's all good, send me packet 16. Packet filter. That's another name for a firewall. It's also known as a, the network layer firewall or a hardware firewall. It basically checks information before it gets to a computer. Most people in their homes do not have a hardware firewall. Uh, I do, but then I'm kind of a special case. It's a little bit limited on what it can check because it is checking those packets and that's about it. It doesn't really have any knowledge of what sort of application is using the, the information, is using the packet. Some of the newer ones can check the status of the packet. What I mean by that is it'll look at it and it'll say, is this the beginning of a new transmission? Is it part of an existing transmission? And if it's neither of those, then why are, why am I seeing it? And so it'll throw it out so it doesn't get past the firewall. This helps speed up the network and make things a little bit faster because you're not processing garbage data. It also prevents sort of a man-in-the-middle attack where it's essentially somebody trying to insert their own communication within an existing stream. These are generally much faster than the next type of firewall we're going to look at. Um, and newer ones can handle more varied traffic. Like old ones could only look at very specific types of data. Newer ones can look at email, uh, web browsers, uh, or web content, things like that. Personal firewalls. These you're more likely to see. Um, it's also known as an application firewall. It's usually better able to tell where information is going and where it's coming from. What I mean by that is an application firewall is better able to look at something and say, okay, well, you know, you're using uh, Steam to play games and the way it uses packets is it doesn't always have an initiation packet sometimes it just gets one out of the blue and if I'm getting one from this address then I should accept it so they they basically they're just a little bit more knowledgeable about where information comes from and where it goes they're also generally slower because of this because with the previous type of firewall it can just look at it and say is it A or B no chuck it personal firewalls have to look at it and go is it A or B no well, is it looking for this application? No. Is it looking for that application? Yes. Okay, does it fit this criteria? It just has more stuff to check. And it works on information in applications. And without getting into the seven layers of the OSI model, which I might mention later, I might actually include it as supplemental information. Without getting too much into that, uh, basically this is the highest level of, the, of a computer. The lowest level is actual physical wires. The highest level are the things that like you're interacting with now, like um, web browsers or word processors, things like that. Those are applications and they run on the very top. And that's where these firewalls work. They work with the information coming from those applications. Microsoft started shipping a personal firewall with Windows XP and it's actually pretty decent. Um, I actually used it a little bit. I wasn't super crazy about it because their rules were either, in XP, their rules were either so restrictive as to be sort of ineffectual or so loose as to be ineffectual. And it does this using profiles and basically the, the default one is that it's open, that it's ac accessible by anybody on the internet and so it prevents a whole bunch of traffic. The modern versions of this are much, much, much better and I would kind of highly recommend them. So firewall rules. This is a giant subject. Um, it, generally it checks where the packet is going, where it came from, and if that's acceptable. Um, it checks if it belongs to an existing stream or starting a new one. We've already talked about that kind of a lot. Um, and it kind of looks at what sort of data the packets contain. Uh, this is a, a rule you can establish that, you know, if this data doesn't meet this criteria, then I don't want it. If this data is coming from this website, I don't want it. If this data is coming from another website, I do. It's This is a super complex uh, area of computers. I... I know a little bit about it. I've never had to configure like a big firewall for a major company, but you can make a living at that. Like just being a firewall tech is actually something you can do. Um, you can write a bunch of papers on it. You can research it for years and become an expert and make a lot of money. Um, you have, generally have to know other stuff too, but if you're a system administrator, you usually have to know a lot about firewalls. They can be used to stop the transmission of worms and malware by blocking certain instruction streams. So if you know a particular 
piece of software, malicious software, it always transmits on a particular port, you can block that port. Um, that's one easy way of fixing it, and that's usually what firewalls will do, is they'll block a particular range of ports. Um, I know I haven't really talked about ports, but the quick and dirty is they're basically a location for communication to come in and out of the computer. Um, certain protocols work on particular ports. Um, HTTP, like using a web browser, is 80. Email is uh, 25 or 287. FTP is port 21. Uh, anyway, yeah. So these are known ports that usually we don't block, but ports are another subject for another time. So in summary, firewalls check network traffic and block certain transmissions based on pre-established rules. Uh, they can prevent some worms and other malware. Um, they can be used to censor the internet. This is kind of a big deal. For a while there was, they kept talking about, they called it the Great Firewall of China. Essentially, the Chinese government established a nationwide firewall that prevented content from coming into the country from certain locations. And that's one of the things you can do with the firewall. You can basically make it look like certain things don't exist. Like you could configure a firewall to block Google. So if you typed in and, you know www.google.com into your browser and hit enter just nothing would come back it said that doesn't exist you can also configure it so if you type that in instead of saying it doesn't exist it redirects you to another site so your URL would say it was at Google but you'd be looking at something different so it's just something to know um, right so that's firewalls in a nutshell uh, it's a giant topic, but it's something I feel like you guys should know about um, because it's an important part of computing.